Workers' strike troubles have hit Britain hard over the Christmas New Year holiday season. Ambulance staff stopping work and the Border Force staff strike that will hit passengers coming into the UK are set to cause big disruptions around Christmas. Some 10,000 ambulance staff in England and Wales will go on strike on December 21st and 28th over a pay dispute. Border Force staff that man airports will go on an eight-day strike starting the 23rd of December. The government's plan? to draft in over 1,200 military personnel to keep frontline services running, and 1,000 civil servants will be monitoring operations. Respective unions have voiced concerns over that decision. They argue that military staff are not sufficiently trained to take on ambulance roles. Some 600 members of the armed forces are due to take on ambulance driving roles, with around 150 personnel providing logistical support. The head of the armed forces, Admiral Sir Tony Radikin, has warned against viewing troops as the go-to option when it comes to covering for strike action. The Welsh government has said that the military will not be asked to drive ambulances in Wales. Meanwhile, the main union representing Border Force staff is set to walk out for eight days between December 23rd and 31st. The government has turned down a 2% pay hike demand. About 1,000 passport check workers will stop work. This is expected to cause significant travel disruption over Christmas. The government said civil servants will join military personnel in helping minimise disruption for passengers by checking documents and passports. Some airlines have reportedly stopped selling new tickets for inbound flights to Heathrow on the days of the strike. The Home Office has previously expressed extreme disappointment with the PC Union's decision. It also warned passengers to be prepared for disruption and take action to plan ahead. Well, joining us now to discuss this in more detail is our reporter, Alex Isaacs. Alex, and this is a situation that is, is kind of now developing and, and getting worse. What's the latest and, and just how much disruption is this going to cause? Well, at the moment, the government are still at a stalemate with the unions. They are refusing to talk about pay, and that's the big issue that the unions really want to discuss. But how they're going to move forward, whether or not they are going to get a pay rise in line inflation or just a pay rise in general, because they believe both ambulance workers and the nurses and the civil servants believe that they haven't had a pay rise that's been in line with inflation for the last decade. And they really want to talk about that with the government. But the government does seem to uh, be a bit wary about bringing up pay, especially when they're claiming that inflation is so high at the moment. By giving anyone a pay rise, it would mean they'd have to give everyone a pay rise and the country just can't afford it. So at the moment, there seems to be this uh, real distance between whether or not the government is even going to step in at all this year. It looks like these, some of these strikes may go on until next year. In fact, the RCN, the Royal, Royal College of Nurses, did say that the government only has 48 hours after the second strike in the beginning of this week before um, they will potentially lead to further action in January again. So there's going to be a lot more disruption. The government is calling on uh, the Unite Union in dealing with ambulance workers to call off the strike before it even goes ahead this week. And is there a deeper malaise at work, Alex, um, in terms of people's frustrations with the administration? There's absolutely a, d a deeper malaise indeed. Um, it's not just about pay across all of these sectors. It's about working practices. People have come into many of the roles because they love the jobs or they love care and they love nurses or being an ambulance worker. But actually the role has changed an awful lot. And we see here this quite often with the RMT and the unions on strike with the buses and the trains. The, ro the role that they applied for work-wise has changed too much that it isn't what they want now. And actually, it's not just about pay rise at all. It's about making changes to those working practices. In any NHS trust, there seems to be quite a lot of money bandied about, about, but it doesn't go to those who are on the bottom line. It's those minimum paid workers that aren't getting that pay rise, aren't getting the help that they need. And, and that's what's really pushing this along. And I think that's actually what is getting support from the public as well, because people see the hard work the ambulance workers, civil servants and nurses put in and they also believe that there should be some kind of at least incentive there.